Churchill once said, plans are worthless, planning is essential. The plan is going to change. It always does. But the act of planning, that's where clarity emerges. Planning mode in Claude Code is not about documentation. It's about thinking together before we commit to code. It's outside-in development where we focus on the contract, the interface, the way we connect all the pieces. And it's essential for making systems that are coherent and can evolve. This is how great software gets built. Hello world, I'm David Scott Bernstein and welcome to The Passionate Programmer. So why should we separate outside-in from inside-out development? The reason is, is that they're two different modes. They're different ways of thinking. And when we mix them together, it confuses us. It makes it harder to focus because each one is kind of a separate track. When we're doing outside in, we're thinking from the outside into the work that we want to do. We're thinking about how do we call an API? What are the parameters that we need and what does it return? What is its behavior? How does it look to the outside world? And this is the way we want to think about the pieces that we're building, because this helps us build autonomous, testable, extensible code without dependencies, without all sorts of implementation details mixed in. That is what we traditionally call analysis, and it's its own phase, because it's that separate mentality, that separate way of thinking. Then we go into development. Development and design for me are together, because the best place to do design is right in the moment. So I do a lot of, not, not architecture, which is kind of more broad and thinking about like what technology I'm going to use and, and stuff like that, but like how I'm actually going to implement the things, the outcomes that I want. That's what inside out development is about. It's about thinking on the inside what the implementation is. But I only do that after I've done outside in and completely understand what this autonomous piece is supposed to do, how it behaves. And then I think about the implementation details. This is one of the most valuable skills that I have developed over the years as a developer. And it's become even more essential when we're working with AI. AI does not want us to tell it what implementation details. It just wants to know what we want. And then it wants to take the first pass at being able to implement it. Then we review and we discuss, we think about extensibility, but we already have something on the table that we can work with. And that's really, really valuable. Micromanaging AI is just like micromanaging a person. <laughs> no one likes to be micromanaged. Second guessing and all. So this is, a, this is a really different mindset for a lot of developers where we've grown up thinking about like, how do we implement this and all. So taking that shift of mind and being able to delftly go between these two perspectives, outside in to inside out to outside in, back and forth, is really, really valuable. <clears throat> Everybody thinks outside in, but only developers really get to think inside out, get to think about how do we implement these details. And we do it only when we're, when we're building. That helps us encapsulate the details as we're building it. So first we think about what does this feature actually do? What behavior? What's the acceptance criteria? And I always like to go into building a feature with acceptance criteria because that tells me when I'm done. Inside out development happens when we're actually implementing. We are actually building our code. And what I like to do is create a domain model, build the classes and the functions uh, at the behavior that I want and that's just pure behavior. And then around that, I create the services that actually are consumed by those behaviors. And because of that, I can easily fake those services without having to do like lots of very complex mocking. Uh, and it, it makes life so much easier, it makes the code really clear on what I need. And it makes it very straightforward when I need to add features. It all starts from thinking from the outside in. Both outside in and inside out thinking are necessary. The key is to separate them. When we mix them too early and we start mixing implementation details into our design, that's when we start creating de unnecessary dependencies. We want to add our dependencies that are only essential and not couple things together that shouldn't be coupled together. When we work in planning mode, it keeps us to thinking 
outside in. It helps us think in terms of outcomes and thinking things through in terms of what we want to create, not how we actually create it. This is the first step to eliminate rigid dependencies. Let me show you how planning mode actually works. Hey Claude, let's plan the game Gin Rummy. Let's see what Claude says. So what has Claude come up with? Excellent. Lots of information. Now Claude asks me questions. Here's our success criteria. And here are the questions to consider. Aces high or low? Support other kinds of variants? Yes, we will. Once I answer them, Claude will confirm their understanding with me. This is good. Once we have a confirmation that we both are on the same page, Claude will write up a detailed specification. And that Claude will use to actually build the software. This is the magic. Claude is not proposing a solution yet. Claude is understanding the problem. These questions expose assumptions I hadn't thought of. This is why we plan, but we're not done. Planning mode is iterative. So we go back. One of these stories feels a little bit too big. Claude, can we break down story three a little bit more? And Claude is reviewing the design and seeing if we can break down tasks a little bit more. Smaller pieces, clearer scope. This is how we maintain momentum. Small wins that build on each other. Each story has an acceptance criteria. Those criteria, they're the tests. When behavior is clear, tests practically write themselves. TDD becomes natural and not forced. And because we know exactly what the behavior is that we're verifying, it's really straightforward. Planning mode is really the perfect setup for doing test-first development. And now that we understand what we're building, we can start to talk about implementation. But there's something else happening here that's really powerful. Notice what's not in the plan. No use Postgres SQL or create a template repository class. Those are implementation details that we don't focus on. When we focus on behavior first, we're able to see more clearly what the system actually should do and build it in such a way where pieces don't depend on each other. The plan was never the point. It's the clarity that we get from planning that's the point. You and Claude designed together. Separate out the what from the how and create features that work with code that can change. That clarity, that's outside in thinking and it changes everything. Churchill was right. Planning is essential and now you know how to do it. Until next time, happy coding.